SWIFT GPI has significantly increased the speed of payments, with 40% of GPI payments transferred and credited to the beneficiary account within five minutes and many in just seconds. Now SWIFT is building on this after a set of very successful instant payment trials with real-time payments market infrastructures around the world. It's launching a global instant payment service. Well, to look at the challenges ahead, we're joined by Harry Newman, who's head of banking at SWIFT, Fabrice Denel, who's the senior vice president, strategy and partnerships of Matixis Payments, Cathy Newcomb, who's director of SWIFT Business Management, Business Customer Solutions at Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and Matthew Hunt, who's the Chief Operations Officer at UK.Pay. So welcome all of you to Cyboss TV. And Harry, let me start with you first. Those figures that I alluded to, very impressive with the basic GPI services, considering you launched them only two years ago. What's your reaction to the results? Are you surprised at all? Well, to start with, we were a little bit surprised um, because everybody had this perception in the past that, you know, international payments are, are slow and take two days. Well, actually, they don't. And the reality was that nobody measured them, so nobody knew. So with GPI, we have undoubtedly speeded everything up, and now they're measured, and we see that uh, they're very quick. And, and we thought to start with that actually when we got more and more traffic on, we might get more difficult traffic on, and they would slow down again, but they haven't. They've stayed very consistent. And, and we think that's just, uh, that's just a great st story for international payments. Okay. Now the ambition's clearly to make GPI instant on a worldwide scale. What's, what's driving SWIFT? Well, what's driving SWIFT is that we have here the opportunity, the world is moving instant, and we have the opportunity to make a real-time instant payment system globally. And now is the time to do it. So that's the driver. It's a better service for all of the people and clients and corporates out there that banks can provide them. So we can build it. OK, let's, let's move to Australia, which is where you come in, That's Cathy, right. because last year in Sydney, SWIFT announced the successful results from a first trial that was conducted between 12 participating GPI banks in Asia and the Australian Domestic Instant Payment System. That's NPP. Tell us about these trials and also what you found. Well, we, we were a participant in that trial and uh, we felt, found it relatively easy to participate in the trial. It doesn't take a lot of resources or, or even a lot of time. A bit of planning and very good results, you know, dramatically um, reduced processing times uh, into the Australian market from a number of different um, Asian markets into Australia. So we were then very happy to continue on the instant journey and uh, participate in the Singapore trial. So this time we were sending the payments from Australia into Singapore. Again, you know, very easy to participate, not resource heavy and great results from the trial. And were the results in line with what you expected or did you keep an open mind about it? Well, I think uh, given the success of Sydney, I think we fully expected to have the same sort of results and, and we weren't surprised. We were delighted with the results. A trial with the European uh, TIPS TIPS has also recently <laughs> taken place. Uh, what were the differences compared to the earlier trials? Were they larger in scale, were they more participants, more complex? All of those things, yes, there were differences. It was a much bigger, more complex trial across more time zones, more banks, more countries involved. Um, and all of that meant there needed to be a little bit more planning to get it right. So. Um, we certainly felt like there was enough planning and that everyone was well and truly prepared for the test. Um, and again, we, we saw incredible results, um, uh, you know, payments into, into Europe uh, during our day, which is the European night, and still processed in the same sort of time frames that we were seeing into Singapore and into Australia. And Fabrice, this is why I'd like to bring you in, because you also took part in the European trial. So why did you take part and what was the, the main inspiration for your involvement? For, for us at Natixis, it's quite, let's say quite obvious. Uh, on the one hand, we were, <coughs> we were early adopter of, uh, of GPI as global transaction bankers. And uh, we provided, uh, we were the very first to provide the information uh, through GPI to our customers via the corporate portals, let's say. On the second hand, we were the very first to, uh, let's say, start with the instant payment initiative in Europe. So uh, bringing the two, uh, let's say, new features together within this proof of concept was something, what was something very interesting, and we were very happy to do that. Harry, I understand there were significantly more participants in this one. Uh, is, is anyone welcome, or are there more are there more specific requirements that need to be uh, met in order to participate? In principle, everybody is welcome. Now, Europe's a bigger system than than Australia or Singapore, as Cathy mentioned, um, but they have to obey the rules. 
So we need to, to, have a, to make this work, we need a solution where you have a, a service level across GPI and a service level to get into the local market infrastructure, the real-time payment system, that we agree with them. So the participant has to, has to obey those fundamental rules. Now obviously, that doesn't cover all the commercial arrangements of how payments are made, that's all left to them. But in principle, anyone can play who's, uh, who's going to uh, abide by those service levels. And Fabrice, what was Nutix's role in that TIPS trial and how difficult was it to, to play that role? Did you have to make any infrastructure changes, for example? In terms of uh, infrastructure and IT project, it was not that huge. Uh, it, it required more expertise, I would say, uh, especially in the, in the role we've chosen, which is uh, intermediary bank role, meaning that we had to, let's say, translate the Fin world into the ISO world and the other way around. So uh, it was not that difficult because we, for sure, you can imagine that we have been working on this translation, uh, which, which will become massive and at scale in the coming years. So uh, using that and applying that to this proof of concept was our main role. It could have been hard time, but with the expertise we have put in that, it was not that, that difficult. And it, it, it's not, let's say, this is not a concern that new participants should have in the coming years. Cathy, how well did the trial with uh, TIPS go? I think it went very well and one of the differences above the trial into Australia and into Singapore was this time we were seeing um, live status updates from the GPI tracker so that, that made it feel very, very real, the fact that we could see that payment moving from one bank to another and then finally being settled. So I think that gives us a great deal of confidence about what, what it will be like when the world is operating in a complete real-time environment. Fabrice, let's broaden this out. How do you think other countries that want to do this go about it? I mean, is it driven by the banks and should they involve the operator? And where does the domestic regulator fit into all of this? I guess th this is, for sure, this is, on a, uh, as Ari said, on a voluntary basis. This is driven by, by banks and participants within the system, uh, for sure, within the SWIFT community. Uh, the, the local or, let's say, regional operator like TIPS uh, or uh, NPP needs for sure to be involved and to uh, respect the rule books that have been set up. But apart from that, there is no real adherence with, uh, with the local regulators apart respecting the, the local rules for sure. Um, having said that, uh, probably to make it happen and make the network, let's say, at scale, we'll need to solve some problems or additional hurdles. For example, on the regulatory side, um, the FATF uh, constraints and sanction screening and so on is something we have to take into account because when it comes to uh, transfer uh, cross-border payments, we have for sure to filter everything. Uh, another hurdle would be um, on the scheme management, uh, let's say, side of things, because, for example, we need to ensure that the data are transported from end to end so that the user experience front end is the same. But apart from that, we, can, we have all the blocks to make it at scale in the coming years. Matthew, if I can bring you in. Payment market infrastructures are key contributors to all of these successful trials. Can you elaborate a little bit for us on this? And is there any value in this for market infrastructures themselves? Sure. So in the UK, we're in, a, we're in on this as well. Uh, the faster payment system in the UK has been involved in these trials on a, on a sort of tactical basis. And I hope I'll come on later to say what the strategic answer is. But I think I'd highlight two main benefits uh, to us. Um, the first, I think, is a benefit to our users, which is a benefit to us. The direct benefits of something like this, as Harry said, a faster cross-border transaction. That's a really clear benefit. And I think this also has the, the potential to make these cross-border transactions more reliable as well. The second, though, which I think is the key one, is a bit more intangible. Payment systems only work when people are confident in them. And this functionality, which is a sort of track and trace for a cross-border payment, will increase confidence in the payment system. When you send a parcel and can go online and check the track and trace ID and know mm. the parcel's got mm. to the other side, you're more confident in the, in the transaction. And we think the same can apply to cross-border payments. 
Okay, and given that, when should we expect to see GPI instant payments through faster payments actually taking place? So that's the strategic that I wanted to come on to. Uh, as I've talked about elsewhere on Cybos TV, actually, we're working on a big program <laughs> called the NPA, uh, which is due, new payment architecture, which is due to go live uh, around 2023. That will implement a new data standard in the UK payment system that, that enables something we call richer data that enables extra data to be attached to the payments. Mm. One of the fields that we will have in that richer data is a field for a track and trace ID like Swift GPI. So that's the route to a strategic solution for us. Okay. Harry, what else needs to be done to make instant cross-border payments a reality for everyone now? So now is the time to get going. We've done the proofs of concept. We know how this concept works. And, and what I would say is to every market infrastructure who's an instant payment system, let's do this. Let's come and play and build those service levels between the international space and the domestic space that will make that work. As Matthew says, that's not going to be overnight. There, Everybody has their domestic uh, building and, and uh, issues to solve. But now is the time to do this, and, and we can make this happen. I want to put this question now to, to, to Kathy, Fabrice and Matthew, so please forgive me. Sure. But, um, <laughs> just, just your perspective on this. Which market infrastructures are on your personal top list to actually join this initiative? <laughs> Well, I'm, I might go first. Look, I think it's like anything. Like the, the sooner you get scale, the better we all start to realise the benefits and our customers realise the benefits. So I think you've just got to go with the corridors that, that have the most volume. So you're talking US dollars, Great British pounds, euros, Japanese yen. I'm not sure what the order of currencies is after that, but I, th <laughs> I think we just tackle the volume um, and work through it that way. In Fabrice. Uh, for sure, I agree 100% with Cathy. As uh, it's logical that we bring the main corridors first, and uh, we need really to work for uh, you know a, an onboarding on the, the U.S. friends because we always know that it's not easy because of regulations and so on. But it's really necessary to make it at scale that we have the U.S. dollar onboarded. Of course, and Matthew. So in the UK, Pay.UK is the single retail authority for payments. We're very lucky to work very closely alongside the Bank of England, who are the single wholesale authority. I'm pleased to say we've agreed with the bank a common implementation of the new data standard that will enable a field both in Bank of England systems and in our systems to enable some sort of track and trace solution like Swift GPI. So the key for us as ever is being joined up with the Bank of England. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry, what should interested payments uh, market infrastructures do? Get in touch. Simple as that. Get the in number touch. is at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> or not, potentially. Get in touch with Swift. Time goes against us. We'll have to leave it there. But a special thanks to my guest here. Well, our guest, Harry Newman. Thank you so much for joining us. Fabrice Denel. Cathy Newcomb. And of course, Matthew Hunt, thank you for joining us here on Cybos TV and enjoy the rest of your Cybos week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.